Welcome back to another video of Bavarian Motor Works. Today's video is going to be on checking your injectors and how to find the fault using a laptop, BMW ISTA software and a KD Cam cable. And of course you're going to need a BMW. So first of all let's just put the key in and get it on the ignition one which it's at and then what we have to do is we go to well obviously we open ISTA the program and then we go to operations read out vehicle data and then at the bottom right we'll see where it says complete identification so we click on that let it do its thing there you go, it's going to put, start populating loads of info now I'm putting my phone down because it's displaying my VIN and I don't want to uh, give that away so I'm going to cover the VIN using these little cable pad things that you can get I'll show you in a minute once I've got one. I'm using this rather than taking time to blur the video out, which will take me forever. So, there you go, there's my design to cover. There you go, it's all covered up now. So, we let the program do its thing. It's going to read the fault codes as well. Overall vehicle test, nearly done. Well, there you go, everything is now green. Well, apart from the PDC, and I believe that is a sensor that sits under the pollen filter, I believe. I'm not sure what entirely that does, but it's nothing to worry about. So, what we can do now, we want to go to vehicle management. And then we want to go to service functions and then powertrain diesel digital diesel electronics and at the bottom you'll see where it says rough running measurement that will load these two options so we want to click on the top one we double click I really hope this tab cable holder is not going to get in the way of any information. I hope not. But anyhow, if it does, I can move it. Okay, so as you, as you can see, it says uh, no fault is stored for the checked component group. So let's go continue. And continue again. Now it's going to explain what the values need to be. So anything over minus 5.0. So for example if it goes minus 5.1, 5.2 there's a problem there. Anything bigger than 4.0. So if it went 4.1, 4.2 up to 5 then you got a problem. Um, the compensation values um, for optimum fuel delivery normally should be about zero but the these are the tolerable um, if it's within that spec you'll be fine so now at this stage what we're going to do now is to start the car okay cars on and we're going to do continue now I already know about ejector one I know ejector one's faulty so 4.1 you see how it's flickering between 4.1 and 4.0 and now it's gone within spec 
just about but earlier on that was at five point something so there's definitely a, an issue with that injector uh, all the rest are within spec and fine so if I were to rev the car now you'll see that cylinder one will drop see that and then it will climb up again so I mean cylinder one can be sorted out normally it it resolves itself after a good a good spirited drive shall we say um, another thing I should mention you really should be checking these when the car is warm as well to be honest um, at the minute the car's not really been started but I know even when it's warm that injector one um, is still not within spec um, but will go in spec once I hammer the car but we don't want to do that so that's how you check your injectors so once I click continue it will say impermissible deviation of the correction injection quantities may be caused by the following fuel injector defective poor compression defect in exhaust gas recirculation okay we'll continue uh, click continue have the following possible causes of fault been ruled out poor compression yes I've checked that defect in exhaust gas recirculation yes I've checked all that so we will click yes and on the next screen it will say replace injector one on cylinder one now it's definitely cylinder one it's definitely the injector in case someone out there um, says it might be the actual cylinder that's not true because originally injector the injector in cylinder one it, sorry the injector in cylinder one was originally in cylinder six so since I've moved it from cylinder six to cylinder one the fault has followed so it is definitely the injector and then we'll click continue and that will give us the final calculation so continue again to finish this um, test and there's other options you can do here as well if you want to check if your turbo is running correctly for example so you click on read measured value read and then you double click on read DDE measured values we have all this information here no no fault called stored continue and continue again and you'll get some uh, options here so for example if I want to check um, measured values for the air mass system I'd select it click continue and that gives you a load of options here air mass actual value 430 odd target value 251 that is okay and of course um, EGI valve is a 5% EGI is deleted anyway so that's not a problem and the boost actual value and target value you need to really uh, read that while you're driving intake air temperature that's fine and charge air temperature again shouldn't really be too high once you're driving if it's in the 50s and above then you may have a problem with that sensor and we'll go continue again and obviously you've got the other options here rail pressure control you've got injector volume rail pressure actual value and target value to start the car you need a minimum of 300 three three bar to start the car and obviously it has intake temperature there as well um, general measured values did I talk about that I can't remember now I'm going absolutely mad ah oh, no I didn't so here you can have 
engine speed, you can check your RPM. Um, pedal position sensor, if I step on the pedal it will go up, the percentage will go up. Coolant temperature, 57C at the minute, car's only just been uh, started so obviously you've got other options there, ambient pressure and alternator load signal. And that's about it. Um, on the next video after this, I will look to do something different on ISTA. Um, I'll have to decide what I want to do. So, I hope that's helpful. Um, I'll try to keep it short as possible. But, um, I will see you again in the next video. Thank you very much and please like and subscribe, it really does help me. I'm not after any money or anything like that. I'm just here to help people the best I can. Thank you very much, see you again.